G'day guys, Neil here from Player One Sim Gear. Today, in partnership with our friends at Track Racer, we're stoked to be showing you how to go about building your very own aluminum extrusion sim rig. We're gonna break it down for you into five easy stages, show you what you need to be looking out for at each of the steps, and how to go about fitting all the components together. What we have back here is the brand new TR160S from Track Racer. What we're gonna show you today will apply to pretty much any of the aluminum extrusion rigs in the Track Racer lineup. So let's dive in and get started. So step one, before you even unpack anything, before you open a box, you need to check this. This is the shipping manifest that's gonna come with your order from Track Racer. The shipping manifest will show all of the different components that are in the overall solution you bought. So it'll include things like monitor stands and accessories that went with the individual parts list for each product. You'll find those in the instruction manuals for the individual products, as you can see here. And these are all available online at the Track Racer website. When you're building a Track Racer product, think of it like a kit set. You're gonna be getting parts from a range of different products that fit together to build your specific solution. So if we grab a random package, you can see it doesn't actually say on the box what we've got here. But what it does have is the SKU, which in this case is TR80 FS05. So I can go back and check on my manifest and make sure that the TR80 FS05 is one of the SKUs that goes into my particular build. Okay, step two, starting the build. What we're gonna do now is put together the base of the rig itself. And one of the first things that jumps out at you when you unpack any Track Racer product is how well packaged everything is. You can see here, each piece of extrusion has its own bag. Everything's very neatly packaged. There's lots of polystyrene padding inside the boxing itself as well. All the parts very neatly packaged together. You can see all the screws and bolts are included in individual uh, sort of vacuum seal packaging as well. And overall, it's just really easy and nice to work with to get started. Now, I recommend something small, like a little multi-tool, something that's gonna help you to open all the packaging without scratching it. Like, a, you don't wanna use a knife, a Stanley knife or something like that, because aluminium is quite a soft metal, and the surface will get scratched if you hit it with anything else metallic. Something with a little protected cutting blade like this, which is gonna allow you to trim away some of the packaging, makes your life just a little bit easier, and certainly helps with opening the 10,000 boxes. Now, I also recommend something like this. It doesn't obviously have to be this large, but something that's gonna allow you to store all the little T-bolts and the nuts in one convenient place to keep everything clean and tidy. One of the questions I get asked a lot is how difficult is building aluminium profile rigs in terms of what sort of skills do you need? If you've ever put together a piece of flat packed furniture, you are more than qualified to put together an aluminium profile rig. And if you haven't, you could still tackle this and have absolutely no problems at all. And the reason is it comes down to the beauty of the construction of these aluminium profile pieces that have what we call T-slots in them. So let me come and show you how it works. Essentially, the aluminium profile, you can see here, it has these grooves down it. And what you have is these ball bearing nuts that go into the grooves and they're held in place, put them the right way around, they go into the grooves and they're held in place by that little ball bearing which pushes them outwards. And that provides a gripping point for the nut there, as you can see. And what that means is you can then screw into that and it'll clamp it tight to whatever you're attaching via a bolt. That allows you to basically construct all sorts of really cool shapes and designs using aluminium profile, and it allows anyone to do it without any tools at all. You simply need an Allen key, and you're away laughing. All right, now another pro tip is it's not always clear which piece is which, because the pieces aren't labeled. So you've got here a piece of aluminium extrusion that's great, but it doesn't say anywhere what piece it actually is. So how do you know? The answer is measure it. So this piece here, for example, is 50 or 500 millimeters long by 160. So I can see here on the sheet, that this is 160 by 500. I know which piece I'm dealing with. Just a quick note too, in terms of tools. Obviously the kit comes with Allen keys, which are perfect. They work really well, no problems at all there. I do recommend a socket set. If you've got one handy, it'll just make life easier in terms of some, some the last part tightening and they're a lot more easier to hold than Allen keys for me. The other thing is a drill or an electric screwdriver. Again, great to use. It'll speed things up for you, but don't use it for the last part of tightening. Keep it on the lightest setting, just using it the first part of the screwing any nuts into place. You wanna make sure that you have them in place in the T-slots nice and neatly firstly, and you wanna make sure you start them and finish them by hand. So one of the cool parts about the TR160S is it has this on the external parts of the frame itself, it has double T-slots instead of the four that it has on the internal, which is perfect, it looks great. It's a really cool new feature. However, 
This is gonna be a motion rig for us and we're gonna be attaching motion actuators onto the outsides of the frame. Those actuators use T-slots as well to grip on to the aluminum. So we're gonna flip and rotate these uh, external side bits over the other way around. You can tell I just realized that right after already going ahead and constructing it the first time around. But on the plus side, at least I realized that now, instead of, you know, once the big rig was built. All right, I'm glad we avoided that little mistake. Onto the stage two. Now we're using T-slots for the first time, onto T-nuts, the ball bearing nuts for the first time, along with these bracing brackets as well, which we're using for the first time here too. Cool. Now for these ones, your measurements are, this, this is where the seat bracket goes, obviously, this is the base. So your measurement for where you need that to sit is just like that. So it's worth putting them on top so you know how to space it out correctly. And then the other thing to do is to don't do everything up too tightly the first time you do it. Just loosely couple this part of it together until you've got the measurements right for the seat sliders, or well, for the seat brackets, sorry. Then you can fasten everything up. That way it allows you to just slide things around a little bit. Life pro tip too, if you wanna move the, um, the T-slots around once they're in the slots, it can be hard to get them around. Little Allen key is your friend. You can use that to push into the slot and just line up the T-slots in the right, sorry, the T-nuts in the right, sorry, to line up the nuts inside the right spots on the T-slots. Hey guys, here's a pro tip when you're using these little bracket parts here, okay? And T-nuts. It can be really hard when you're mounting this part in to work out how to get the screw into the hole on the T-nut and get them all to line up. The way you do it is you line up the outside edge of the T-nut here on the long edge with the edge of the bracket here. So you see, if those two line up just like that, then you're pretty much good to go. Your hole is pretty much aligned. Maybe a little nudge over to the side, but you should be able to get the screw into that and make it work, all right? That is how you get these lined up when you can't really see them. I've even seen guys wear a head torch in order while they're doing it to try and make it a bit easier. Hey, you know what they say? It's only silly if it doesn't work. Now, another pro tip. If you fasten your T-slots on and you haven't slid the nuts into the side, uh, what do you do? Do you have to unscrew and start again? The answer is no, you do not. And I'll show you how. In the event that you accidentally fasten this piece of into place and it's all bolted in and you're like, oh no, now I can't get my T-slots in the angle because I've fastened something on here. They can still slide in. And you'll see what you do. So you simply put them in like so and then slide them down. Now, the problem is they're not gonna, they're not gonna lock in. So you can try and get your fingers in there and do it or this is where having a little Allen key comes in handy. So you slot them into place and then you put a, simply put a little Allen key in there, give it a wiggle and it'll lock in and you are, come on, focus, you are good to go, you are locked in place without having to go down in from the top. Another cool pro tip. You'll notice I forgot to put these two T-slots in just for demonstration purposes. That wasn't my accidental mistake, number like five, of putting this rig together. Okay, now we come to one of the very cool new features of the TR160S, which is these things. So you might be familiar with the Track Racer TR120, which has the wider sort of back profile and then it, it narrows in for a slightly sleeker frame on the front. Well, that is exactly now what the TR160S does. It's brought these curved brackets into play and these things will go on the sides here and allow us to slope the front of the rig inwards so it looks a bit smoother and sleeker and takes up less space as well. It's a win-win. Now again, these are meant to be mounted with a smooth so then with two slot side outwards to give, that a, to give it that sleeker look, I'm going the other way and mounting it with the four slots outwards because I need the additional mounting brackets for the motion actuators. And don't forget on this one, we're using the lock washers with the longer M8 screws as well. So now we have the brace put together with the front, with the exception of course of the front and the, and the wheel mount. Uh, this is still loose. I haven't bolted that down yet. I'm still waiting to do the seat slider component. But what we have to do now is these two additional braces that go underneath these main struts. And to give you a, a sense of just how rigid this frame actually is, I mean, this thing already feels absolutely rock solid. Now we're about to brace it even more on the bottom with additional bracing. So that's pretty super cool. Okay, so the base is mostly done now. The next stage is we've got to put the uprights on for the wheel plate, and then we'll need to put this very cool Track Racer branded front piece on as well. So before we do that, we need to put four T-slots on each side so that we can clamp on the uprights, which is the next phase. 
there we have the frame all set. Now it's time to put some uprights on there. Hey guys, so now we've got both the uprights on. You can see I've kept it kind of loose because it does shuffle around a bit, I promise. What I want to do is make sure that this is still, these ones here going into the main base are still flexible. I've locked in the sides though, uh, because I want to be able to slide it back and forth once I get the seat on and the pedal plate in position. I want to make sure that my wheel plate is exactly where I need it to be. So keep these ones loose until right at the end and then you can button them up. All right, so now it's time to tackle the seat slider. Seat sliders basically come in three parts. Now, traditionally, seat sliders and I have not got along well together. Uh, I always struggle getting these things on the rig, but let's have a crack and see how it goes this time around. Okay, so if you check out the way the seat slider works, so the instructions on the seat sliders are not great. You can see you've got essentially an interior part here, which is, that's the bottom rail that goes on the rig itself. And then you've got the external part here, which is, or the upper part, if you will, which is the rail that the actual seat bracket connects to. And then in between them, the seat slider sits and it hooks on to those two little indents there that you can see, like so. And it, it's held in place by tension. Okay, so it's not actually fastened into the seat slider, it's when you bolt it into place, that's what holds it physically in place like that. All right, let me show you how it goes on the rig. Oh, and if you're not sure which way around it goes, you can see on there's, there's like machinery at this end of the slider. There you go, machinery, and then this part's smooth. Think smooth at the back, all right? The smooth part of the slider goes to the back of the rig, machinery to the front. The instructions aren't very clear on this in terms of there's the M8 14 and 16 millimeter screws. I always put the 14s on the bottom because I prefer the shorter lengths to hold on through the T-slot and then use the 16s on the top with the washers. Now, once you've mounted it, you'll find that the rear hole isn't actually that easy to get to. Now, remember what I said about keeping all of these parts loose so you can slide them around? Okay, you can already see how much tension there is there holding that together. That's how these things work. So there you go, you see, that's in place just like that. Now, what I want to do is slide the seat slider forward so I can access the mounting points for the bottom rails on the back here. So, a little bit of resistance from my arm there, pull the seat slider up. While holding it all gently together, the rails slide forward, and now I have clear access to the back here. So again, I'm just loosely buttoning these up because the thing is, there's no one size fits all arrangement with these rigs. It very much depends on your body type, your, how tall you are, how long your legs are, whether you like a close in driving position or your arms out in front of you, whether you like your seat slightly backwards, like in an angled position or whether you have a very upright seat. So a lot of that just comes down to you. So keep all of this part loose. Once you get the tension in there enough to hold this rod in place, you want to be able to keep this in adjustable right up to the point when it, pretty much after you put the seat brackets on, then you can start to fasten this part of it down. Again, let's go back to you want the, the frame rock solid at this point, but you do want a little bit of movement in these brackets so that you can adjust the seating position and get it dialed in perfectly for you. If you look here, one of the problems with seat sliders like this is that you can see sometimes the optimal width of the brackets doesn't line up with the optimal tension on the seat sliding bar. So what do I mean by that? Well, essentially this part will fall out. In order for the bars to line up with the brackets on the seat, the crossbars, sometimes the seat slider will straight fall out. What you can do, give it a little push. Don't be afraid to just push this out slightly, very gently, and you'll be able to bend this just a little wider to create a bit more of tension. And this can actually fit a little bit wider than it originally comes in the box. And that'll allow it to fit with a slightly wider uh, positioning of the bars in, in order for the seat brackets to slot nicely on top. So I'm going to show you how this is all buttoned up now because I, like I said at the start of the video, I don't get along great with seat sliders as a rule, but if I can save you guys a bunch of time, then happy days. So what we've got here now, where we landed is seven centimeters from the edge of this point here to the, uh, to the end of this piece of aluminum, or essentially where this one starts. And that is the same all the way around. And what I've done is that allows the seat bracket for the TRX Alpine seat to be bolted at the edge of its sort of brackets point there I guess so it's as far it's as wide as it can be so because what we're ultimately trying to do here is we're trying to keep the seat slider the width between these two bars as narrow as possible to keep tension on the slider bar while also wide enough that the seat can connect into it so where I landed is seven centimeters from each side gives you a good width that allows the seat to connect on the slider bar will fall down at that 
position when it's default out of the box. Like I showed in the previous video, what you need to do is just stretch the slider bar out just a little bit, maybe two or three centimeters, then it will slot into place. So the order I did this is I put the seat on first, the brackets, the, mounted the brackets to the seat. I then came in and loosely had the seat bars in around about the uh, sort of that eight or nine, cent sorry, the five or six centimeter marks so or about here. I then attached one of them first, put the seat bar in, slid this into place, fastened it down at the seven centimeter mark, and then went on the other side, slid it into place, fastened it down at the seven centimeter mark. That allowed these ones to then be fastened down and allowed me to go through and fasten all the other bolts and keep it all locked into place. And now we have a nice, easy seat sliding motion with good tension on the seat bar so it's not gonna come loose and everything nice and straight and nicely buttoned up. For our seat choice, we opted for the brand new Alpine TRX racing seat. This thing looks super cool, it feels really comfortable, and we're gonna be building here a hybrid rig, which is designed very much for flight and for racing. Let's check out this new seat from Track Racer. Here's that multi-tool again, so you don't damage the seat. Here we have it, the Alpine Racing TRX seat from Track Racer. This thing looks very cool, it feels awesome. Uh, can't wait to do a more detailed review on it once we get it up and running on the rig. Now let's first of all find out how to get it on the rig. All right, so let's put the seat brackets on. Now these were very hard to find in amongst all the boxes. For reference for you, they are called TR80 BS BRAC2. TR80 BS BRAC2, that's the SKU for your seat brackets. All right, now again, same rules apply here. Middle of, I'm gonna use the middle mounting points on the, on the bottoms and I'm gonna keep it loosely in place so that once I get the seat, I can shuffle it and make it all fit together. Now, these seat brackets come with lock nuts as well. You can also just use the mounting points on the top of the slider. I'm not entirely sure why they, I think there's just different options. You can mount it however, depending on the different bracket or if you're not using a seat slider, perhaps it gives you a couple of different options. I just tend to use the holes that are already there on top of the seat slider, the bolts that come with the seat bracket, slot straight into there, make sure you use the washers to hold it in place and you should be good to go. Look, in an ideal world, this is a two person job, this part, because it's really helpful to have someone to hold onto it. The other way people do it is they'll mount the seat brackets first onto the seat and then try and attach it. I think it's probably, you know, whichever works for you. Um, given that it's just me on my own here, it probably would have been easier to do it that way, but oh well, let's work it out. So something that comes in really useful at this point is a prop. Something that's gonna help you hold your seat in place while you are getting it organized. Because finding these holes is kind of an art form. There's no easy way to do it and there is no known life hack that I can give you that's gonna make it easier. I would say start at the back, um, but then I'll be honest, sometimes I've started at the front and that's worked really well too. So just start somewhere is the key. So this time you got a nice neat even hole at the back. This box is actually really helping. It's allowing me to do it with one hand. Okay, we are in, and I gotta tell you, that was a lot more involved than it appeared in fast forward. Uh, getting the screws lined up in the holes is really tricky to do, and it's all obviously still quite loose, it's not buttoned in yet, but uh, at least we are upright, and we have a seat on a rig. Score. All right guys, moment of truth. I decided to pop the seat off because when I went to adjust the seat slider, one of the seat bolts came loose which is fine, but it, there was so much tension on all the different parts of the seat within these seat mounts that I couldn't uh, easily get it back. So I just popped the seat off. I'm gonna revise my initial statement from earlier, which is you certainly can put these seats on, put the brackets on and then put the seat on. I think it's actually best to put the brackets. It's still gonna be awkward putting it back on because it's a big heavy thing, but if you've got a helper who can hold it, then you're gonna be fine. I recommend if you've got a bucket seat, definitely put the brackets on the seat first before you uh, try and mount it onto the rig. It's just a lot easier with the, the, you know, the difficulties of getting into the fiberglass. We need to go really squarely into the mounts. Uh, I reckon it's a lot easier doing it off the rig. So there you go. I've learned this one as well. Revised pro tip, take the fiberglass seats, take them off, put the brackets on first, then mount the whole thing onto the seat fighter. All 
All right, guys, now it is time for a pedal plate. Now, we went with the hybrid slash inverted pedal plate option. It's that sort of a highly adjustable one that you can go inverted if you want, or you can go in the F1 style. The reason we did it, we'll explain later, but basically, because this is gonna be a hybrid flight slash racing rig, we wanted to explore ways to be able to use rudder pedals and racing pedals. This is the cool part of this rig, the footrest, that I'm excited to explore for additional use case of putting the pedals on here, sorry, the rudder pedals on here with the racing pedals up on the stand. So let's see how it goes. Okay, we gotta flip the rig over to get these on because they mount the mountain from the bottom. Awesome. That was actually really easy. So I'll just type them on there. I'll just put them finger tight at the moment. We're gonna put the side brackets on next and then that'll give us the positioning for the footrest as well. So we've just struck our first interesting challenge with this hybrid system. So this is designed for three slot or to accommodate three uh, aluminum profile with three slots, right? And it works perfectly on the uh, four slot profiles like the 160 because it's intended to mount it on the ground just like that and it uses the bottom three profiles so can anyone guess what the problem is for us we have flipped this around haven't we we because we we've kept the t-slots on the outside on this one because we remember we're going to be mounting motion actuators to it what it means is we now don't have three slots on the inside so what we're going to do is we're going to mount it using the bottom and then the first point here in this hole so our two mounting points are going to be there and there instead of here and here so again it works, not a major issue. It's not gonna impact the stability of the solution at all. And it's one of the beauties of working with T-slotted aluminum profile is you can just usually find a solution and make it work. You can see here I've done the mounting points. So I've gone through the holes there at the top, or the bottom, basically the bottom of these rails gone through there and there and then the bottom holes so it still works perfectly no loss of function and just as rigid as it was okay now it's time for the pedal plate to go on top of these stands here using these cool little features here which are these little adjustable thingies i don't know what they're called they have a name but really easy to use again just mounting the brackets on the side using these screw them on slide them up and down job done and two i love these adjusters such a simple mechanism works really well and they lock super tight you're not going to get any movement there at all that's awesome i'm sure there's a proper way to mount this pedal plate i always just kind of put it on however it works um yeah Some, someone will comment i'm sure and say there's a correct direction look again it depends on your pedals you basically as you can see yeah, lots of holes there you are absolutely going to find a configuration of spacings that fit your pedals All right, now to mount what I really hope will be the pedal plate for my rudder pedals. Now this is obviously a footrest, but it's gonna sit perfectly down there and I think work really well for rudder pedals. Let's find out. All right, so there we have it. We now have footrest, pedal plate. Obviously I'll adjust all these things around, move them around a bit, uh, a lot to make sure it works and to see if we can get it all to fit and see if we can get the, the hybrid rudder pedals and uh, sim pedals model working that we're looking for. I think we will. All right, well, it feels like we're making good progress now. We've got a rig that's looking fantastic. Now it's time for the wheel mount. Gotta say, I absolutely love the like the iridescent red on these track racer components for the wheel mounts. It's just it offsets the black of the rig so awesomely. It looks super cool. So that's a trap for new players. Make sure that the the T nuts are slotted in with some resistance. Otherwise, they fall to the bottom. That's two that have fallen to the bottom. Okay, there we go. So those are all very loosely settled in there. There's gonna be a lot of adjustment here again before we bolt everything up. You guys are gonna get sick and tired of me saying, keep everything loose until the end. But honestly, it's worth it. You're gonna have a lot of moving around, a lot of moving parts to go into this before it's finished.
finally, a bit that we don't have to keep loose. At this point, you can fasten this one to your heart's content. Let's talk wheel decks. We've gone for the TR1 wheel deck because I just really like the TR1. It's probably the most versatile, I think, of all the wheel decks. It gives the easiest level of movement and rotation to get your wheelbase in just the right position for you. Uh, by all means, you know, obviously, all of the wheelbases are great. Just make sure you, you check which one is right for your use case. The TR1 is nice and simple. And pro tip for the TR1, it can actually be mounted upside down as well. So it's intended to go like that but it can definitely, I've seen use cases where people mount it like that, and that just allows you to hold to get these leg bars up high, or this crossbar up higher, and give you more leg clearance if you need it. All right, there we go. Now we have a wheelbase as well. Another step done. All right, so the way the armrest works, super simple, just uses these angle brackets to essentially hold their profile uprights in place. You can see there, it just sort of slots on like so. And then likewise on the top here as well for the actual rest itself. This part isn't height adjustable because the height is defined obviously by the length of this piece of profile. Okay, now that is all nice and, so, nice and solid and level. I haven't buttoned these ones down yet again because I need to make sure, remember this is attached to this, I need to make sure that this is all in the right place. So. Now we've got everything on there, we're at the point of getting on board, measuring, seeing how we like it, and if we're comfortable with the way everything feels and if everything's in the right place. And then we can get on to the all important phase of putting in the covers and buttoning everything down. Okay, so this actually all seems pretty good for me, so initially, so I'm used to a formula style rig uh, with my feet up quite high. It's just my net, I started off driving Formula One when I first learned to do sim racing and I built my own custom rig back in the day in a very laid back, almost formula sort of style. So that's, for me, it's what I'm used to. So this feels really natural and good for me. I'll probably need to tilt the seat back just a fraction to give it a little more of a reclined feeling and then maybe lower the foot pedals just a little bit. Uh, what I do still have is lots of room under here for the rudder pedals, I hope. We're gonna see once that gets in, once we have those, I might need to lower this heel plate, which fortunately there are holes to allow me to do that. Lower that down a little bit to create a little more room just for foot movement on the rudders. But ultimately, this feels pretty good from a driving perspective. I think once I tilt the seat back a little bit, it will be perfect. And remember, the seat adjustments are in the middle of the middle at the moment, so I've got plenty of room forward and back for guests or to you know adjust as I need to. So, this is all pretty good. I'm gonna to start to button everything up. And there we have it, our TR160 build is complete. Look, I hope you've gotten something out of this video. Hopefully some of the tips and tricks have resonated with you and we've been able to give you some guidance and more than anything, giving you the confidence that you can go ahead and build one of these rigs really easily yourself at home. Once again, I'd like to say a huge thank you to our friends at Track Racer. They've built an amazing product here and it's been an absolute pleasure and a privilege having the chance to build it and showcase that for you guys. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two from the video. Of course, please do stay tuned. There's a heap more content on this rig coming on our channel shortly. We're gonna be kitting it out with all the accessories. More so, we're gonna be turning into a genuine racing and flight hybrid rig. So stay tuned for that journey and we'll see how it shapes out. And of course, we're gonna make it move. We're gonna be attaching motion actuators. We'll also be attaching a bunch of peripherals and doing some deep dives into those. For example, we've got a triple monitor screen coming through and the flight accessories, a few other things we're gonna be adding to it as well. So once again, I'm Neil from Player One Sim Gear. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It means the world to us. We really appreciate it. We will see you next time.